career that you have done or you do psychedelics. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Mm-hmm. You do psychedelics? <laughs> you, are you still doing that? Mm-hmm. You do, psychedelics, doesn't that trip you out? Um, yeah, well, that's kind of the point. Um, really depends on which psychedelic you are doing, but a lot of them are used for healing purposes. Um, you know, there's even studies with psychedelics used in therapy, and yeah. um, the way I do them is usually in plant medicine ceremonies, which you're under the guide of somebody, and they sort of, you go on a journey, and they sort of help you talk through things, and you just come out a new person. It's, so which ones do you do? Which one are you taking? A lot of them. A lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> and what made you decide to do psychedelics? Um, honestly, I had read my first experience with a psychedelic, which was MDMA, which is not always considered one, but it was I had read about a study showing treatment of PTSD with MDMA, and I don't necessarily have PTSD, but I think at the time I was struggling a lot with anxiety and depression, and so uh, someone offered me it at a music festival, and it just completely changed my world. I, um, I quit a job that like, was not treating me well, and I um, ultimately decided to go travel the world for three years, like all because of that trip. It just sort of <laughs> cut through like the barriers I had put in front of myself. Yeah, and when you came off of it, was reality still there? Did you have to deal with reality? Yeah, I mean, all those things I did were after. It wasn't like I made all these decisions oh, it on it. after you came off the psychedelic. Yeah. You came down. Amazing. And so what is life like for you without psychedelics? What, does it look, what is it for you, life? Without, you mean? Without being on this stuff, psychedelics. Um... I mean, life, usually the things that you learn on them, you then implement in your life. And that in of itself, like the insights never leave you. So you really, oh, I see. you know, you don't need to do it all the time, but it really just has helped me live from my heart and, um, and connected me to my intuition and just like made me feel more in touch with my spirituality. And you're not able to do all that without the support of psychedelics? I don't think I would have, personally. I mean, they say that, like, one psychedelic session is like 10 years of therapy. There are ways to get there. There's meditation, and some people do have different paths, but right. it is one of the fastest paths. And when the last time you did psychedelics? About a month ago. And are you still out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you back? Yeah, you'll come back within a few hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how often uh, is it recommended that you do it? There's really no recommendation. I mean, probably not every day, unless you're microdosing. Some people do that. But um, I try to keep it to like once a month just because I want to like be able to focus on work and like not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to focus while you're on it. I I've actually, it really depends how much and what kind I have written on it, written some of my best pieces on psychedelics. So is psychedelic that little thin piece of paper that you put on your tongue? You're thinking of LSD. Uh, that's yeah. one kind. <laughs> that's one kind? Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that? Yeah, I've done that. And, and what's that like for you? <laughs> that one's not my favorite. It makes me a little anxious, but I always end up thinking about death. <laughs> getting really deep and <laughs> contemplating things like death and the meaning of life. It, I'm not making it sound pleasant. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the one that you put on your tongue, right? Mm -hmm. How often do you do that? How often? That I've only done like three, four times in my life. Uh, uh, when I was in my 20s, I did that once. I was at a party somewhere and everybody was doing it. My friends were doing it. And they're like, hey, Jesse. Try to put this on your tongue. And I didn't know exactly what it was at the time. And so I put it on my tongue, and I went way out there somewhere. And all of a sudden, I see these colors, and the music sound like 
jamming and it just felt different. Then I looked over in the yard, we was in a backyard party, and the rocks and things started moving. They had like fake frogs. <laughs> and the frog next started moving. I'm like, what the? Yeah. <laughs> Once my friend became a dinosaur when I was on the she just gradually turned into a dinosaur. But I knew it was her. I wasn't freaked out or anything. <laughs> I was like, look, that frog is moving. They're like, Jess, it's not real. But it look real. It's moving. Um, what other, I mean, what's the name? What, what type of other stuff? Is it like a peel form, the other type that you do? Um, there are many other types. Um, the one that's helped me the most is called iboga. It's actually from the roots of an African shrub and it's root bark, but they put it into a pill. You can take it as root bark, but it's disgusting. That is like the most intense one. Like the trips will last like two days and you'll be under supervision, but that actually helped me heal from um, chronic Lyme disease, which I was suffering from for like two years. And that, like, not only did that, but just sort of opened me up and sort of connected me to my spirituality and made me make a bunch of different decisions. But then there's ayahuasca, which is you drink. Then there's 5-MeO-DMT, um, which you, like, suck through a straw from a vial. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Are you, like, a, are you a drug addict? Um, that's a misconception that, you know, this doing these things makes you an addict. I feel that since I have done them, I, my life has only gotten much better. And I think anything can be addictive, but I think it really depends how you're using it. And um, yeah, I think that we should be careful not to label people drug addicts because they've used drugs as like a healing mechanism or as a way to sort of explore their consciousness. And so you, if I'm hearing you right, you take this stuff and you trip out for a while and then eventually it goes away, right? But while you're on it, you're learning about life, you're learning things, right? You're mm -hmm. overcoming. And so when it's gone, you're able to live from the things that you learned while you were high. Mm -hmm. And then how long did that last before you have to go back and do it again? That's really, it varies. It, sometimes I just get signs or I just get a feeling. Um, I can't predict how much time will elapse before that happens. So you get a sign that says, you know what, I need some more psychedelics. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever partied on them? Psychedelics? Partied? You know, had a good time, go out to the club. Yeah, and... you know, I kind of got tired of that pretty quickly. I used to, when I was living in Germany, like they use MDMA in clubs and I realized that was not the best use of it because I just felt like there was much more to be gained actually from writing on it or from like talking on it. And so I kind of outgrew that. How do you feel right now? Are you comfortable right now? Mm hmm You feel comfortable right now? Why do you ask? I mean, because you're not on them now, right? No. And when the last time you had them before today, when was the last time you did it? A month ago. And so it's lasting a whole month so far? Yeah, I would say that I am still benefiting from what I learned, but um, yeah, I, the last thing I did was 5-MeO-DMT actually, and I felt like that trip just gave me a sense of overall confidence in the future. and. And since then, I've kind of been focused on other things, so haven't really felt the need to go back. And do you do this under the care of a, under the care of a doctor or a therapist or something, or can you just, at home, you decide, you know what, I need me some psychedelic. <laughs> yeah, that one I would not do by myself. Um, it really depends, but it's not always a doctor or a therapist. There are people specifically trained to work with these substances. Um, oh. some, some of them call themselves shamans, but that's kind of, you know, white people don't always want to call themselves shamans because that's kind of culturally appropriative. So some of them, they just call themselves like psychedelic practitioners. Um, wow. I didn't know that was going on in the world. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting. Your folks don't know that you're doing this, right? They know a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, I mean, maybe they'll find out from this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they would say if they found out that you were on psychedelics? <laughs> You're non-binary. <laughs> <laughs> so You're on psychedelics. 
What would they say once they see this program and they hear you say that? They'd say, oh, what happened to my child? <laughs> they'd say, be careful. <laughs> like, oh, you're an adult. It's your life. Just, you know, be careful. Amazing. <laughs> Are you a Christian? No. You believe in God? I think so. Um, I kind of believe God is like all of our collective consciousness. Did you grow up as a Christian? I was raised Jewish, actually. Are you Jewish? Mm-hmm. You a Jew? You don't look like a Jew. I thought you were just a typical white girl. <laughs> <laughs> Half Jewish. So does the Jewish community know you use psychedelic? <laughs> <laughs> the Jewish community? I don't think there's like an entity like called the Jewish community that's overseeing me. <laughs> well, you better make sure they don't find out. They're going to let Moses know. <laughs>